Salam alaikum guys. Um, this is my second time trying to go live. Uh, thank you very much. Um, thank you for coming. I want to introduce myself first and I want to thank uh, Snappy for allowing me to come here. I really appreciate the opportunity you guys gave me. Uh, please let me know if you can hear me uh, so I can proceed uh, if anyone, anybody is watching. Um, so I want to introduce myself inshallah. Uh, my name is uh, Duran Ali and I am a web developer. I was a web developer for uh, about um, over 10 years. Uh, I started about around like 2006, but I became a professional web uh, developer in about around 2008-2009. So, inshallah, thank you for coming. Uh, so, um, so yeah, today we're talking about web development 101 and uh, this you know this uh, session is for anyone who's interested even slightly uh, about web development it's not all it's not for experts it's not for uh, web developer experts it's for people who are interested and they want to know more about web development inshallah give me a comment let me know if you can hear me uh, uh, just let me know inshallah so I can know you guys can hear me um, so a little bit about me uh, I started uh, building websites and, and uh, as a web developer around 2005 2006 uh, I was in high school at that time uh, so basically uh, one year a whole year I didn't go to school the reason for that was because I had a, a leg surgery uh, a major surgery and I couldn't go to school and they wouldn't let me um, have a homeschool, so I just didn't even go to school. So for that year, Alhamdulillah, you know, I had a, uh, I had a computer at home, and I was, you know, in my junior year, I had a computer at home, and Alhamdulillah, it was a good experience. I, I basically went to the internet and I was looking for, um, you know, something to learn. And uh, while I was doing that, I went to a group, a Dawa group. Uh, maybe some of you remember, uh, they're called uh, Baltalk. It was a chat room uh, where people go and basically they uh, make, it, you know, you create your own chat room. And there was a da'wah room over there and I went there to just, uh, you know, uh, to just hang out and, and, and kind of like, at that time there was, not a so, there was no social media, there was only MySpace and it wasn't that active. So Alhamdulillah, you know, at that time, uh, I was doing da'wah online and uh, that was my favorite thing to do uh, on my free time. So Alhamdulillah, uh, you know, the Pal Talk room I was talking about, uh, it's called Ans uh, Islam Answers Back, it was a da'wah group. Um, so what they did was, uh, you know, you invite people, you invite, um, you basically invite nine Muslims to discuss about Islam and things like that and it was in English. So I was just, you know, enjoying there, practicing my English <laughs> uh, in that room. So I basically, you know, uh, became part of the, of the room, part of the chat room. Uh, so I was learning how to like build websites, basic stuff. Uh, so one of the brothers asked me to a, build a website for, um, to build a website for the Dao room. And I was like, okay, I'll try my best. I don't know much, but I'll try my best. So I started building one. I put together, uh, I used tools. I used uh, a application called, uh, not application, but content management system called uh, Joomla. Uh, I will not get into the technical part right now. Inshallah, I'll get into the technical part later. The first part is just my story on how I get started uh, on web development and things like that. So uh, I built a website for the Dawa Room, Alhamdulillah. It was really good. A lot of people benefited from it, uh, and the good thing was, you know, when a non-Muslim comes, they used to refer to the website, and we uploaded tons of lectures, tons of you know beneficial stuff. So um, that was the good thing, you know. Uh, I I saw the benefit uh, and a website has uh, where people can come at any time and and can benefit from uh, from others. So Alhamdulillah, uh, since that time, I I went on after that. Uh, I went to local masjids, uh, you know, I saw that they needed a website 
and I needed to practice my uh, my what I just learned, you know. So I went ahead and, and went to different masjids and alhamdulillah I built a website for free. So that's one of the things, you know, you need to learn is when you're trying to start a, a something, like when you're trying to start web development or programming, you need to do some projects for free. You can't always charge, uh, you know, you can't always charge people uh, because you're just a beginner. And if people trust you, uh, you need to do a good job, you need to know what you're doing. Uh, but you you will charge, you know, eventually you need to charge people. You can't always do it for free. So Alhamdulillah, you know, I started going and uh, building websites for free. Uh, another experience was I worked at an elementary school. Alhamdulillah, here in Minnesota, that's where I live. Um, yeah, so I went to elementary school uh, in Minnesota and they needed help with setting up computers. Uh, so I helped them with that. There were like 300 computers, so they wanted somebody to set up. Uh, the first thing was, you know, I'm, you know, I was building websites, but that doesn't mean I know how to fix the computers. Uh, but Alhamdulillah, you know, from learning uh, how to build websites, you can learn different things uh, when it comes to technology. You know, uh, you just Google things, you just learn things uh, faster. Um, so. From there on, I, I fixed the computers. I put together, uh, it, was, it was like 300 laptops uh, that, that they told me to uh, put together to basically set, set it up for the kids to, uh, to install uh, antivirus and things like that. Um, so I set up that. That was a good experience because it kind of like helped me get out of my fear of like, uh, you know, trying new things. So Alhamdulillah, after that, um, after I finished high school, I moved to a different state. Uh, I, I moved to California. So that was around like 2009, uh, 2008. So I moved to a different state and I started college. I, I started a different life than before. And I, uh, I couldn't build websites because it was like completely different life. You don't have friends, you don't have, um, you don't have like uh, schools and things like that or you don't have anybody to give you a job to build a website. So there was not, there were not, there was nothing for me to uh, practice my, what I knew. Um, so I get discouraged a little bit, uh, but I went to, diff I went to college. I did my school and everything. And Alhamdulillah, after, uh, after a while, after a few years, I moved back to Minnesota. <laughs> Everybody who moves from Minnesota comes back to Minnesota all the time. I don't know why. Um, although it's cold, it's snowing right now. Um, so I moved back to Minnesota and I started a web design agency. You know, I, right when I came back uh, around 2015, I started my web design agency. It's called the Sahel Solutions. Uh, it's a web design agency based on, based in Minneapolis. And alhamdulillah, I started marketing it. I started, you know, going out, telling people, this is what I do, and it was not only web design; it was a web, uh, it was a graphic design. So uh, the thing is, once you start a website and you start building websites, you realize you will need a uh, graphic design work. So when you go to a client and you say, "Hey, I, I'm going to build a website for you," they will ask you, um, um, "Can you do a logo for us?" And it's kind of hard to always refer to other people to create something for them. Um, so. Uh, I knew a little bit of graphic design, so I advanced my knowledge. I went and learned uh, Photoshop, and I learned Adobe Illustrator, and few other tools that I can use. And I practiced my, you know, my craft, and, and alhamdulillah, eventually I became a graphic designer. So I started this agency, and then right after that, I started another company uh, called, uh, right now called Aleph Cloud. It was used to call Duxi Cloud. It's a SaaS business. It's a SaaS means basically it's a software in the cloud. Uh, so it's a ma it's school management application uh, that Islamic schools use, uh, like Duxia. Uh, they use this application to manage their students, their fees, and all that. Uh, so I started that too. You can go, you can go to the website. It's called alifcloud.com. Um, so it's basically a SaaS application. So I started those two. And uh, alhamdulillah, it's been a, a long journey, but you know, you learn a lot of things, uh, you know, when you when you go through all these ups and downs. Uh, so that's my background, basically. Um, I'm a web uh, developer, graphic designer, 
uh, Sahel Solutions and Alif Cloud, those are my two businesses. Um, so, inshallah, today I want to talk about a uh, web development one-on-one. So, I want to start from like scratch, so you guys uh, have some idea of of this field. Um, are you interested in it? What should you do? Uh, where you where you should go? Um, what is it? You know, all that stuff. Uh, because a lot of people are scared of uh, anything related to programming or web websites and things like that, because they think it's like. Um, it's for geniuses, people who know a lot of math. <laughs> That's the problem. You don't need to know a lot of math. I actually made a video. I have a YouTube. I, I made a video about um, about math. Do you need to know a lot of math to become a programmer? And the reality is you really don't. You don't need a lot of math. You don't need to be genius. You don't need to be a, a, a hacker or something like that. You just need to be like a person who is curious about things. You need to be like, uh, you know, you need to understand, you need to like, to figure things out and, and just, you know, read. You just need to read and watch and be patient. That's one of the main, main, if you ask any developer, patience is number one because there's a lot of things you will not understand, but you just need to basically uh, keep going. Okay, so um, so my YouTube, uh, somebody's asking, my YouTube is uh, my name, so it's Duran Ali. You just put Duran Ali in the, in the search. Okay, so what is web development? I want to define it because when you're talking about a topic, you, want, you, you need to define what it is so you have a basis people can understand. A web development is a broad term uh, used to describe the process of building or maintaining a website or web app so that's the general uh, description of what uh, web application uh, I mean web development is um, so Duran uh, my name uh, the name I am going live here uh, Duran D-U-R-A-A-N okay I don't know my life is saying you have some lower connection or something like that I don't know um, but anyways, uh, so that's what web development is. It's a, a broad term to use to define uh, the process of building websites, basically. Okay, so I want to talk about two points when it comes to what is web development. Uh, the number one point I want to talk about is the difference between web design and web development. Uh, that's the difference. The difference is web design is the process of designing the actual website so you 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 take an application like um photoshop and you actually format the whole website that is that's called web design so you design the actual website you don't do any code you don't do anything you just go ahead and you, and you design it so graphic designers do that and they're called people who who build this kind of stuff uh, on, on design uh, interfaces they're called uh, UI and UX so they, they, they basically design the, the, the experience the person is gonna have so they're gonna design they're going to design the buttons the, the look the colors and all that stuff okay so the diff the, the, the other one is development or, or you know developing the whole website and that entails uh, pretty much the uh, the coding part of the of the website so the developers, people who code, uh, they're they're doing the development. So the coding is also itself is divided into two parts. Um, so the whole website is divided into two parts: the front end and the back end. The front end is what I was talking about: the design, the design of the website, how the website looks. Um, so you could use uh, like you could design the website with photo or with Photoshop, and then you use languages like HTML and CSS. Uh, these are like uh, a design languages. Uh, it's some uh, HTML. It's, HTML stands for uh, Hyper Markup Text uh, Text uh, Hyper Text Markup Language, and CSS stands for um, Cascading Style Sheet. So, um, so those are the first two languages that you need to learn. I'll talk about that in detail. Uh, but front end, when you hear front end website. Uh, front end it's basically uh, designing the website uh, in like uh, like the, the layout of the website and then using those languages HTML and CSS to uh, pretty much make it look good and then you use another language called JavaScript 
to make it a little bit more interactive. So if you want to click a button and then you want, uh, you want something to pop up, you use a JavaScript. So JavaScript is a huge language and it's not the same as Java. <laughs> a lot of people uh, mix Java and JavaScript. They're totally different. Uh, JavaScript is a front-end language, which could also be back-end language. It's used for web applications and websites. Java is a different language. It's a language used by Google. Uh, I don't want to get into the technical stuff because people who do all this programming stuff, they always get into the technical really quick because that's the thing they like to talk about. And if you like to talk about something, you, you get into it right away. Um, so Java is completely different. It's what you use to develop uh, Android apps. Uh, that's Java. Um, this is totally different. So we're talking about JavaScript. I'm not. I will not talk about Java at all. <laughs> um, so the front end. We're talking about the front end. So it's basically a, just building the, the the how the website looks. You know how the the experience the person is gonna have the buttons, the color, all that stuff. You use these languages. You lay out the website. You use these languages to design the website. And then there is the back end. It's a completely different beast when it comes to um, uh, when it comes to building websites and web applications. Uh, the back end is um, where you use languages like programming languages. This is where you use uh, like a logic. You use logic. You use um, languages that uh, will tell the person um, certain things, and the person will do something, and they will react to that. So, for example, Facebook. Right now, I see people commenting. Uh, those comments and these likes you guys giving me, they're going to a database. Um, so when they go to the database, um, you, uh, Facebook uses a language like, let's say, BHP, which I will talk about later, uses a language to retrieve that information. So the reason I see these, these things you guys writing for me is because there's a language called BHP that is retrieving information like the likes and the comments from the database. So that's the back end. You build the language and a database and you make sure those work with the front end, which is the look and how the website looks and how the information is displayed. I know it's very confusing. I'm sorry if you know, some of you don't understand, but it's um, this is what website is. This is what web application and web development is. It's basically those two things, front end and back end. If you're confused a little bit, Google front end and back end, you will have a lot of descriptions of people talking about it. So let's go to the next topic that I want to talk about, which is uh, what you need to know to become a web developer. What you, what really do you need to know? Like you understand the importance, you understand like there's ways, there's different types like uh, front end and back end, but what actually do you need? Like the things you need to get into this field. Um, so number one thing you need is a, you need to have a general understanding of how to how to build websites. Uh, so this is called procedure. So you basically need to have understanding of environments, environments like hosting. Hosting, uh, I talked about uh, in my YouTube, like in detail. Hosting uh, is a place you put your files. So uh, like GoDaddy, HostGator, those guys, they give you a little space where you could like save your files so people can can see your files like your um, videos or your pictures and things like that so that's that's hosting you need to understand a domain what is domain domain generally is um, the name your name uh, like a dot com so facebook.com is a domain so uh, those kind of things you need to understand I talked about this in detail in my YouTube also uh, and my YouTube is in Somali so if you don't understand Somali it's going to be hard to get it. So, um, so domain. So domain. You need to understand domain. You need to understand database. What is database? How does it work? What it is? So these are the things you need to understand in general to become a web developer. So you just Google those stuff. You go to YouTube. You just Google it. You say what is hosting. You say what is database. Uh, what are the different types of databases? What, how does it work? Everything you want to learn, you could just Google. You know, it's a lot of people think it's very hard. Everything is very hard, but anything you want to learn actually is just uh, in the internet. 
unless it's something very you know very detailed and like uh, not a lot of people talk about okay so the next thing you need to learn that that was the general idea you need to have the next thing you need to learn is languages so you need to learn the programming languages that I was talking about um, some of them are easier than others uh, so the first one would be if you want to become a web developer the first thing you need to learn is HTML uh, so HTML I was, I was talking about it it's just the, the structure of the website you need to structure your website so you use HTML to structure your website and then you need to learn something called CSS I was talking about it uh, it's called cascading style sheet it's basically like how the website looks so it's like a programming language where you say um, you say something like header equal to um, equal to this you know header 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 color is equal to this da, da, da. you define pretty much the website and how it looks uh, so you define somebody's asking me what my what's what my website is called uh, I have two websites one is called sellsolutions.com the other one is alifcloud.com okay so um, so you need to learn HTML CSS so these are the two must learn. So you're not gonna be a web developer if you don't learn these two. So HTML and CSS, you could actually put out a website if you learn these two. And they're really easy to learn. HTML is easier than CSS, but if you follow instructions and things, it's really easy, like um, it's not that difficult if you get into it. You just need a little more patient and a little more focus, focus and then you, know, you will, um, You'll, you, you'll get it. So uh, just keep trying and don't give up. So the next language you need to learn uh, to become a web developer is JavaScript. And I talked about JavaScript a little bit before, but uh, JavaScript, which is not same as Java, I have to keep saying that because pe uh, I've seen a lot of people, not here, but in my videos on YouTube comment and say, oh, uh, are you talking about Java? So I am keep saying Java is not same as, I mean, JavaScript is not same as Java. Um, so you need to learn JavaScript, which is a interactive language. It's one of the biggest languages, and I will talk about it later. How big it is, the the most you know the biggest language right now when it comes to web development, and the most uh, like in demand language is JavaScript. Pretty much every company, every technology company is looking for somebody who can do JavaScript. So if you learn JavaScript you will just get a job right away you know that's how big it is and how people are looking for uh, uh, JavaScript developers um, so you need to learn HTML CSS and JavaScript and it's gonna be hard for me to define all of them right now in detail because this is gonna be really hours and I wanna you know get into different topics inshallah uh, so those are just the front end that I was talking about those languages and then you need to learn back in the language at least one language you need to learn at least one language so in total you need to learn four languages to become a web developer in total you need to learn four and uh, I said the first one is HTML the second one is CSS which is the design and the third thing the third one is JavaScript which is the interactivity of the website if you ever seen a slider something is sliding on the website it's a JavaScript if you've seen like a news scroller like something some writing is like going across the screen it's a JavaScript if you've seen anything that's popping up to you or sh like coming up to you uh, when you try to click something that is JavaScript so JavaScript like it does a lot of things um, so you you need to learn at least four so the last one you need to learn is it's called server-side script in language server-side script in language it's a language you need to use to uh, connect to the database um, so and also the database has a language so I'll talk about later uh, I'll talk about next what the database language is um, so you need to learn at least one language so you have like about four options when it comes to uh, server-side languages you have PHP which is big uh, a lot of people don't like PHP uh, <laughs> I also talked about that in my YouTube a lot of people don't like PHP because PHP is um, it's actually the king of the internet basically a lot of people say Facebook uh, was 
partially built with BHP. Uh, it's the language used to, by WordPress, which I will talk about later. Uh, it's the, like almost more than 30% of the internet is uh, is built with the BHP. So it's really like the internet's language. But at the same time, a lot of people don't like it because it's very specific language and it's not the best language to learn. So it has all these, uh, you know, uh, bad things, but it, it's very useful too. So that's the first language uh, you I would recommend for you to check it out. I wouldn't say it's the best language ever. Um, the second language would be Python. Um, it, I'm not doing this in order of being in the other one is better than the other. I'm just saying these are the languages that you have an option to learn. You can learn all of them if you want, if you have the time. So Python is actually my favorite language. Python is, is a, uh, it's not used for the internet all the time. So you will not see tons of websites using Python, but uh, it's you could use for for the internet. You could use for server side scripting uh, language. So Python is very easy to learn. It's everywhere. Like if you want to learn a Python, it's everywhere, um, and it's also uh, one of the as, as I said, it's one of the easiest uh, languages to learn when it comes to web development, uh, and it's the favorite of a lot of people. <laughs> the reason why JavaScript, uh, I mean, uh, why uh, Python is the favorite of everyone is because it does tons of things. It does like machine learning, it does all kind of calculating. Um, it, it does a lot of things outside of web development. So it's designed for almost everything that you could do. Um, so that's the second one. The third one would be uh, Ruby on Rail. The language is called Ruby on Rail. It's a simple language. Uh, it's 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 really easy language, but I wouldn't recommend uh, Ruby on Rail because it's um, it's not the most famous language out there, and you will not get a lot of help when it comes to learning. When it comes to uh, you know getting help on on learning the language, so Ruby on Rail is another option you can learn. It's really easy. JavaScript, I mean, I mean Python and Ruby on Rail are really easy to learn. Um, especially Python. Python is like learning English. So most of the syntax and most of the, uh, you know, programming functions and all that, it's it's like reading English. So even if you never read any, any programming language, which most people are scared of, like uh, uh, you will see people when they see some coding, they'll be like, whoa, what is that? It's like a mumbo jumbo. But the good thing about Python is a lot of, a lot of the functions and a lot of, a lot of things about it is just English, you know. So, so you see like normal words, or you see abbreviated words. So, uh, you will not feel intimidated by Python at all. Okay, so um, I said uh, Ruby on Rail, BHP and Python. The third one will be uh, C plus uh, plus. So third one will be C plus plus. People who um, who develop with uh, ASP.NET will will understand this. Uh, Microsoft put together all this uh, when it comes to uh, uh, C++ and, and ASP.NET. So uh, that is, you know, ASP.NET is a Microsoft uh, platform that you could build a website with. Uh, so people who use that will understand. So you have those four options when it comes to the back end. When, it, when we say back end, you have four options. Okay, so actually you have one more option I'll add there. Uh, I don't want people to be mad about this, but Node.js is also another one. <laughs> people who use Node.js is 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 a it's a really powerful system. I wouldn't recommend that you build your whole website with the, uh, with Node.js right now, but inshallah, in the future, uh, it might become the the biggest, the best way to build websites the back end so node.js is another one too let me talk about a little bit about databases what what, what is the database what how do you use database what what is it so databases um there are different databases i'll just talk about two or one i'll talk about uh, mysql mysql is a database uh, it's where you store your information basically it has like tables it's called the relational uh, relation uh, database uh, so it's like um, tables and the tables are connected 
they have all this relationship so uh, it, it's the one I used to build my application the Aleph cloud um, I used to build uh, I used uh, MySQL so it's like a tables are connected so let's say there is a parent table and then the parent table um, has other connections those connections are the children so the parent has one table the children has they all all of them have different tables uh, or they have a different uh, sets of data so they're all connected together um, so that's what a relational database is uh, and also there is a non-relational database like MongoDB and other uh, so databases are basically the most important part of, of keeping your information let's say if you have a blog you really need to use a database you can't you can't start a blog without a database everything you, you see on Facebook uh, when it comes to writing uh, comments text posts everything all that is is stored in a database um, and the way you retrieve that information is with a language like the scripting language I was talking about so that's that's generally how database works uh, so if you want to learn uh, let's say my SQL and you want to like become a my SQL expert you'll need to learn something called SQL uh, structure query language so it's the language used to uh, manage databases um, so uh, I mean the MySQL database so uh, SQL is your friend when it comes to relational databases so yeah this is all technical I'm sorry if you feel bored but uh, once you understand it becomes easier for you to uh, to understand all these concepts and so I'm just giving you a general idea of uh, of these different concepts so inshallah I'll I'll answer questions at the end I will don't ask now because I don't know how to scroll back the comments um, so let's go let's go back to what we're talking about uh, so the question is there's you know a question people ask me all the time they say where can I learn all this stuff you know you always say oh go to the internet and search and stuff where can I learn uh, so I'm gonna give you that um, where can you learn all this stuff the database the scripting languages the programming languages and front end and back end where do you learn uh, the you know I put down about four uh, places or three places but there are tons of places you can learn from uh, I'm just giving you these places that uh, I'm recommending because I use them uh, I learned from them so I know how they work but there are a lot of places that you can learn from and also the first thing I will recommend uh, before I even talked about where you're gonna learn, is you should go to a uh, you should go to Google and put uh, CS50 lectures or CS50 Harvard. So the reason why I'm recommending this is there's a there's a course given by by Harvard. Uh, it's a full course. It's free online. It gives you the foundation. So everything has a foundation. And when I was starting a web development, that's the first lecture I, the first course I took. It's a free course online. It's called CS50, and it's given by Harvard. It's one of the best. They they keep updating every year. The one I watched like 2000, like six or five, it's really outdated. Uh, the one they give right now, it's it had like high quality videos and stuff. And they have all these, you know, uh, they have all the syllables and all the practices. Before, when I was learning, it was just the lectures. It was just a video you watch and that's it. But right now, alhamdulillah, uh, they have all the, what do you say, all, all the things that you need to learn. And this is, when it comes to web development, is a must watch course. Seriously, like, I, I can't recommend any, 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 any more because it's like, you know, one of the best uh, courses I've taken. Uh, it's called CS50 uh, and it's given by Harvard. It's on the Harvard website uh, when you go there. And it's free, 100% free from uh, week week zero to like week 14 or something like that. And it's full course that you could take and, and, and you could take your time to learn. They teach you from like beginning. So they teach you from zero. Like they go to the uh, uh, bytes. They go to, I mean, they go to, uh, they go to the, um, what do you call the motherboard and they tell you how the motherboard works 
how how do people use the language called C, which is uh, a language you could use for the motherboard and how to connect to the all the circuits and all of that. Uh, how does that even work? How how do we get all this from like from one zero? Because computers only understand one zero. How do we go from that to like videos? How do we go from one zero to like memes and like Facebook Live and all that? How does that even work? How does a computer understand videos and all that? So uh, CS50 is one of the best because it gives you general understanding of how computers actually work. Uh, and once you understand how computers work, you uh, you understand better uh, languages. Like like JavaScript is a high like it's called a high end or something like that. Like it's like language that is not like C. C is like a low low end language. It's like a to the it's close to the machine, as they say, and JavaScript is like an abstraction, like what I'm saying, like PHP and JavaScript on these languages that are built with the web, they're abstractions. The reason they're abstractions that I want to go in detail with it is because um, like the computer, you're not telling the computer to translate ones and zeros. You're just telling a web application or like a browser to basically um, translate what you wrote to uh, like pictures or videos or like a writing and stuff like that. So they're like, um, they're like simpler way, a simplified form of like uh, lower end languages like the C language. So CS50, go ahead and book market somewhere and learn that, take the whole course, and then you could get into other programming languages and stuff. Okay, so where can you learn uh, what I was talking about? Um, the other languages I was talking about. The number one place I would recommend is Team Treehouse. And Team Treehouse, it's not free. It's not free. But if you want to learn uh, technology or programming, you need to invest in yourself. Uh, if you don't invest in yourself, nobody's going to invest in you. So you need to invest in yourself. So it's not a lot of money. Uh, so when it comes to Team Treehouse, it's about like $40 or something like that. $30, $40 uh, a month. And once you learn, you could just stop uh, paying that money. So uh, Team Treehouse is one of the best. The reason I recommend this is because I, I was with Team Treehouse for a while. And the reason I recommend them is because they have professional uh, courses. They don't have some they don't have some courses that somebody, random person in somewhere put together and they put it out there, which I'll talk about later. You, Demi, you guys know that. Um, uh, so Team Treehouse, they have like professional courses that are put together and they look really nice. Um, another uh, another place you could learn uh, is a Free Code Camp. Free Code Camp is a really good place to get started. Uh, you could go there and they will give you a procedure, like they will give you like steps. So if you want to learn HTML, you have to go through all the steps. And once you finish like different languages, like the front end, they will give you like a certificate like it's not really like a huge certificate like you could go to a place and say oh i get a certificate but it's like uh you know to help you move forward so they will give you a certificate and say hey you finished all these courses good job um and they also have a really good community where if you if you're stuck they will help you learn and everything's free so it's like a free code camp dot org that you could go there and the other one is teamtreehealth.com uh, the third place you could go is Udemy. I don't recommend Udemy that much. I I realize it's really one of the best places. That's why I'm putting it in the list. But Udemy, it's really good. It has amazing courses. Not everything in Udemy is the best. You have to keep that in mind. Uh, it's uh, people just put stuff there, put courses there. So you have to understand which one is good and which one is not good so the reason the, the way to know which one is good and which one is not good is by looking at the looking at the ratings looking at the comments and things like that and you decide I'll try to put one in the comment later or in the description uh, of courses that I took and they're really good when it comes to web development um, the, th the uh, third one I would recommend third place I would recommend is LinkedIn um, some people might say, what's up? What's LinkedIn? How are you going to learn anything in LinkedIn? Did you guys know that LinkedIn actually bought uh, Linda, the website called Linda, which was um, a platform like Team Treehouse where, you, where they upload professionally made courses. 
so they record themselves. They have like teachers and they record and professionally and all that. So LinkedIn bought Linda. And then what they did was, if you go to LinkedIn and log in and everything, you will see a place that will say learn. And then when you go there, um, there is, I'm not recommending you to go to Linda. You could go to Linda and subscribe to them. But the reason I'm recommending LinkedIn is because LinkedIn, they have something called Path. So Path is basically, they take multiple courses and multiple lessons and they put them together and they create a path for you, something to follow. So let's say you wanna learn front end. Then they put together HTML course, CSS course, JavaScript course, and in between them, they put different courses that will help you understand the concepts. And then they will put that in a package and they will call it path. And, and it's, not, it's not cheap. It's not cheap when it comes to uh, LinkedIn. Uh, if you go to Linda, it's about like $29 or something like that. If you go to LinkedIn, it's about $49 or something like that, $50. But what was I saying? I was saying invest in yourself if you really want to learn. Uh, and when it comes to investing in yourself, there's different ways to invest in yourself. You could go to school, uh, you could uh, go to boot camp, or you could become a self-taught. Um, so those are your three options to, to go for. I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, so LinkedIn is, is one of the best because it has those paths. And you know, for a person who's a beginner and you don't know what to learn, uh, they will give you a way to go and you just say okay I want to learn the back end and then they will give you everything you need to you need to learn the back end and if you follow it and you become and, you, and you're patient then you will come out as as a good developer okay so those are the online places I want to talk about like um, the three things I was just talking about so you have options you have three options when it comes to becoming a developer you can go to school um, and you could go to school for four years. Um, you could take courses. The school, they might not teach you uh, the things you need, but they will teach you the fu uh, fundamentals and the foundations. Um, the good thing about the school is uh, you'll have somebody guiding you throughout the way. Uh, you know, it's, it's just a normal thing you're learning. Uh, another option is boot camp. Boot camp is not for everyone. <laughs> It's not for everyone, and the school is not for everyone. If you already have a career, let's say you go into the health field, and you don't like what you're doing, and you want to get into the programming, um, going back to school for four years or more, it's not an easy thing. And also, the money you have to pay a lot of money for that too. Uh, so, school for it's not for everyone. But if you just finished high school, or you're about to finish high school, or 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 you have the time. Uh, then you could go back to school and take you know four years or so and get that degree uh, computer science degree or software engineering and boot camp uh, so boot camp I get tons of questions about boot camp I actually recorded a video about it boot camp is one of the biggest thing right now in the in the programming and on web development field it's uh, you know there are tons of companies here in Minnesota the University of Minnesota, the UFM, actually started a course, uh, started a boot camp. So uh, the university itself get threatened by the other companies that are starting boot camp. And the other companies are saying, hey, you don't even need to go to school. Come to our uh, boot camp. In about six months, you become a developer. Uh, so the university itself was like, oh, I need that money. So they go ahead and started their own boot camp. And the good thing about the university is um, they actually put your their name behind you so you could say I went to the uh, UFM for you know for this course um, but that's beside the point but there's a lot of uh, boot camps out there that you can learn from um, the thing about boot camp is you need to have two things uh, you, you need to do two things number one is you need to have money so minimum amount for uh, minimum uh, cost for boot camp is about eight thousand and the maximum is about like twenty thousand. So you need to have about some somewhere there about twelve thousand to fifteen thousand uh, dollars to spend like on the boot camp. Uh, the second thing you need to have is time. You need to have at least about a year of time. Uh, when I when I say time, I mean you, you're not supposed to be working. You're not supposed to be working full time. Most of the time, you're not supposed to be working part time either. You're supposed to focus hundred percent on the boot camp. 
So that's what they will tell you. They will recommend you to not really work. Uh, if, and even if you work in the old community to work part-time so uh, So that's the thing you need to have a time and also you need to have the money when it comes to boot camp uh, But when it comes to self-taught um, You need about uh, you need one thing you need dedication and you need you also need time But you need dedication more than that you, you need like you need to focus 100% on On what are you doing and you could go to the websites? I was talking about and you can learn from them, but you get so much distractions in life, like uh, you know your family, work, all that stuff. You need to like allocate time. You need to take a time and learn that. So if you have a discipline, I would recommend. And and you don't want to go back to school, and you don't have the money to go to boot camp, then I would recommend self taught. Uh, you know, most of the people, most of the people who went to school actually became self taught too, because self taught is it gives you the time to, you know. Get used to the uh, get used to the what you just learn and, and understand the concept and different things Okay, so those are the three things three options you have when it comes to learning uh, programming um, okay, so the third thing I want to talk about is uh, Tools that you you could use uh, One of the tools I want to talk about only one tool because I don't have much time uh, I've been talking for a while um, one of the tools you could use is called WordPress. Um, and this tool is a content management system. Uh, for me right now, I have my web design agency, I would say 95 or more, 95% or more uh, of the clients that I work with, um, I build their websites with WordPress. That's how amazing WordPress is. Um, and most of the clients they don't really care what I build the website. <laughs> they just say uh, website notice. Oh, WordPress has some cool. It's a has no You know. So um, WordPress is big. Um, you don't need to know code to uh, use WordPress. I did a course about WordPress, like how to use WordPress, all that stuff in my YouTube. I did a whole course about it. Um, so WordPress is big, uh, and if you want to build your own website or your own thing, you could use WordPress. There's also another software called Wix, and I will not recommend 100% Wix. Um, I don't want to get into it. <laughs> I'm not the person to ask about Wix because I don't really like it. I, I had a bad experience with them. Um, so WordPress is actually a tool. So it, it's like any other tool. It's not a company, and WordPress is 100% free. So that's a good thing. You could just get the whole software and put it on your website and then manage your website with it. So it's like a drop and drag. Like, uh, you know, you take content and you, you, drag, you drag it and put it somewhere else. You write it, your, your blog. If you want to blog, you could use uh, WordPress. It's one of the best blogging uh, applications or content management systems. So it's really amazing. But everything amazing has something you know side effect or something like that so <laughs> the bad thing about WordPress uh, that not most people say is the security it's not the best place to uh, to put together a website for a huge company like if you have like a like a huge empire or like a huge business you don't want to have like you don't want to use WordPress that much uh, you could you could uh, big companies actually use WordPress like CNN and other companies and like TechCrunch and those companies they use uh, WordPress But you need to be careful when you're using WordPress Somebody who knows how to develop with WordPress need to understand uh, need to develop your website um, So it has a security uh, risk, but it has a lot of upside It has a lot of you know benefits when it comes to somebody who doesn't know how to code WordPress is your friend like if you, you don't really know to you don't really need to code a lot you just need to know how to customize your themes and things like that. So if you want to understand WordPress, I, I talked about in a whole course uh, in my YouTube, inshallah. I'll put the link somewhere. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about is trends. What is trending? What are the new things when it comes to web development? Uh, you know, what are people talking about? Um, so are you guys following me? Just let me know if you're following me. Um, so the trends okay so the first trend you need to understand the first word you will hear anywhere when it comes to web development is mobile mobile is number one mobile is everything mobile is the future um, 
all websites in in the in this age right now in in the modern age are designed to adjust with uh, with the mobile. The reason for that is the use of mobile kind of like skyrocketed right now, um, and also the third world or you know as they say the developing world like you know I don't know India or other places or Middle East and even Africa they are using mobile like crazy they like everybody has a mobile everybody has access to the internet right now the, that internet might not be the fastest that's one of the reasons uh you know websites are being modified are being changed because uh they see a lot of people are uh, using mobile and if they're using mobile let's say in somalia and they don't have a good internet uh, uh you know it's you need your website to load really fast you know uh, you need you need your website to load fast. You want to have somebody who's like bad Jogo, <laughs> bad Jogo. You need that person to see your website and to see your content. So mobile is is big. Another thing about mobile is another thing about mobile is web apps and mobile apps are actually merging right now. That's one of the big things. One of the big trends. Um, when I, what do I mean by saying that? I mean uh, right now if you want to build a a website if you want to build a web app you need to hire a specific person who knows that if you want to build a iOS app or Apple app uh, then you need to hire somebody who knows that field and if you want to develop if you want to develop a Android app you need to hire somebody who knows how to develop Android and Java and those languages okay so for big companies like uh, giant companies that's a headache that's like you know a problem uh, because they have to hire a team, like hundreds of people for iOS, hundreds of people for Android, hundreds of people for the web, and then that, that's like a lot of money that's wasted. So some companies like Netflix uh, figured out a way to take their website, just convert it to a, uh, to a web app, uh, convert it to a mobile app, and boom. You know Netflix, their app is not really native app. Did you guys know that? It's not a native app. It's just their website converted into an app. So they don't have to do two things or three things anymore. So Netflix is game changer as when it comes to web development uh, because they're like, you know, advancing every day. And other websites like, you know, uh, of, uh, Google is one of the most advanced uh, technologies. They have advanced technologies. But Netflix, uh, they took their website, just converted to a mobile app, and boom. So Right now, uh, if you if you go to Netflix and stuff, they their website and their web, uh, mobile app is exactly the same. So there's nothing different. The only different is how it was like uh, configured. So the mobile app was configured uh, to adjust to the mobile, so it kind of looks like a native app, but it's really not a native app. Uh, it, it it's used to build JavaScript. So JavaScript is huge because you could build a website with JavaScript, take that website, convert it to a mobile app, and then convert that mobile app to two different options, which is Android, iOS, and boom. All you have to do is just change the content on your website, and then your mobile apps automatically change the content. So that's one of the big things that is trending right now. A lot of companies are looking into it. Um, but... Uh, but if, if you want to build your normal app, like iOS app, now you have to use, you know, the specific language for iOS. So that's a big thing. Another thing I was talking about is JavaScript is trending right now. Uh, as I was talking about, JavaScript is huge. Uh, the reason it's big is because for most people, they say it's uh, the future of, of web development. For a lot of people, they say JavaScript is the future. JavaScript is everything. Um, and also, if you really want to get a job when it comes to web development, you really need to learn JavaScript. There's no way around it because um, every company is looking for somebody who knows some way or form or shape about JavaScript, anything about JavaScript. The thing that's trending right now about JavaScript, uh, the thing that is big about JavaScript right now is uh, React, a, a framework. So JavaScript is a big language and then it has a framework and libraries. Framework and libraries are basically a, a tools or I would say systems people built and they use JavaScript. So they kind of like uh, made it simpler for people to use JavaScript. Instead of writing, let's say, 
um, 10 lines of JavaScript code. If you use some frameworks, you will write about two lines and it will do the same thing. Like people who use a jQuery, they know that jQuery is a library of a JavaScript and it uh, makes JavaScript simple. Like instead of using like about five lines to, to define some function, uh, you use one line. You actually use two words. <laughs> people who use jQuery know that. It's like it, jQuery is so simple, you will think you're doing something wrong. You're like, what is happening? I just use only two words and this whole change happened. How is that even possible? <laughs> so uh, frameworks are powerful because and, and libraries because they make things simpler. So React is big right now. If you look for React.js, everybody's looking for somebody who could develop React.js uh, uh, apps and applications. And I was talking about Netflix. Netflix, the whole Netflix was built with React, the React uh, library or React framework. And then there's different uh, frameworks. There's Vue.js, there's Angular. You know, it's a whole lot um, things to talk about. So those are the things trending. And, you know, I want to conclude, inshallah. Uh, and I want to, you know, finish it there because it's taking too long. Uh, in general, that's basically what web development is and web development 101. That's generally what you need to know. Uh, that's generally what you need to go after and understand and, and get a hang of. You need to understand all these, you know, languages, all these uh, different ways to do things. You need to understand like um, uh, different tools to use. Uh, for example, for me, I can uh, build a website from scratch, but why would I do that if I have a WordPress, you know? <laughs> uh, and if the person doesn't care, um, it's like, you know, you have to understand sometimes you don't have to really write code. Uh, and sometimes you have to write code. For example, for my application, the Aleph Cloud, um, building it took me a very long time you know it took me about a year to uh, build it and make it perfect and after that that was 2016 and then it took almost half a year to market it to go to different duxies and different schools and then after marketing it alhamdulillah 2018 uh at the mid of 2017 we got a uh, you know we got several clients and then starting 2018 we took off and alhamdulillah, now it's the end of 2018. Um, you know, alhamdulillah, a lot of clients are enrolled. So, um, so it takes a long time to do things uh, and, and you have to be patient with everything. So that's all I'm gonna say. Uh, guys, do you have a question? Please let me know if you have any question about what I said and about anything related to web development. Uh, yeah, so that's all I'll conclude. I want to say, I want to also uh, conclude and thank uh, the brothers of Snappy. Uh, you know, I was following Snappy for, from the beginning. Uh, so when Brother Mukhtar went to uh, Australia and he came back with the idea and the vision and, and he started the group and everything, it's just like, you know, it's idea put together and it's from scratch and now it's a big thing. So Alhamdulillah, that's what we need as a Somali, as a Muslims. We need to um, have idea and the conviction to make it work. So uh, mashallah, great job guys. I, I really am proud of you guys. And I'm very grateful that you guys let me uh, have the platform and talk about what I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about web development. And also I'm passionate about helping people and giving back. Uh, that's why my YouTube is in Somali, you know, everything I talk about in my YouTube about programming everything what I teach is in Somali the reason for that is because uh, People back home They don't have they don't have all the opportunities We have like if you live in the Western countries you have so many opportunities and you just don't know uh, You could speak English. That's like number one opportunity right there uh, You could speak English if you could speak English you could go to places and learn everything and learn from you know people who speak English, uh, but a kid in Somalia, like in Badil, who has a cell phone, <laughs> and he has nobody to teach him anything, but he's passionate about it and he's trying to go to school and stuff. Uh, I want to give them a, a, a head start, basically. I want I want to make them understand different concepts and different things about uh, programming and things like that, uh, so they get excited and they go to school and. Even if they don't go to school and they have a, they get a computer or something, 
they can they have a head start basically and also people who go to school i receive so many uh, messages from people in somalia and different uh, places uh, in the world like utopia uh, different parts of africa i was just receiving a message from sudan like a minute ago when i was coming alive uh, i received from uh, messages from europe and uh, and middle east somalis all over the places who want to learn programming who want to understand programming and uh, and you know I understand these people who live in the Western countries, uh, but my uh, focus and, and the people I really want to help is people who live back home. And there are tons of guys who go to school and they go to universities, and they are like so uh, so smart. Like they uh, some brothers who contact me, they already know everything, but they just need opportunity. You know, uh, they just need somebody to believe in them and somebody to show them the way, uh, show them the big concepts, show them how to take to the next level and you know go from uh, just writing a code to actually building a business building a you know your own whatever you dreamed about and, and using your code and your programming to make that possible all right um okay i'll just conclude here if you guys don't have a question i appreciate you guys for coming here and for uh yeah so exactly so thank you, thank you all of you, and JazakAllah khair. I'll conclude here. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.